Hey y'all, it's Anime Kim, and today I'm going to be reviewing episode 1 of To Abandon Sacred Beast. And let me just tell you, this anime is sick as fuck so far in the first episode. And I mean that in an epic way, because for one, this anime already establishes its setting pretty well in the first episode through a natural dialogue and through showing its audience things instead of just spood feeding us shit because I like how they established that for one the setting which is a country called Patria where you had the north and southern portions of the country in civil war with each other because they were going for like this major resource and eventually parts way in the war the south side gets the upper hand against the the north so in desperation the north makes uses like this forbidden technology which was made by this woman called Elaine to turn some soldiers into these beings, I mean, into these um, super sol unique soldiers called incarnates, which essentially are humans that have like beast like forms and that can do epic shit and more cooler shit than a normal soldier can. And I like that establishment right there of the setting because, for one, it helps explain. Why in the hell are they beast looking creatures in the first episode? It doesn't make us wait multiple episodes to find that information out. So for one, that was a positive element about this episode. And two, they showed us a bit of the war between the North and South. How the North had the upper hand, but then we see that South overtake the North. And I like how when they actually do show the sequences, they show off that even though the South had like the superior incarnate soldiers and like how it showed off in some stills that it wasn't completely easy because you see in some of the friends some of the um, incarnates be taken down because and I like that because even though in the episode it's real that the south side wins and all that of Pat Patria it's still nice to know that the victory in the war was hard fought and earned and then at the end it explains that they came back together the north and the south side and additionally, aside from giving us the know-how of what went down, it also did a great job of establishing the threat of the incarnates because I like how Mitz weighs in, you have the first incarnate go out of control, which was this man that had like these snake abilities, and he had to be taken down by soldiers on his own side. And I like how that's epic foreshadowing because later on, you have this girl called Delane, who she hit off well with her main character, Hank. But the thing is, Hank was also an incarnate. And as a way for Elaine to try to, um, try to resolve the situation, she attempted to kill Hank. And possibly, if she would have succeeded, she would have tried to kill every other person that uh, went through the surgery to become an incarnate. So that the possibilities of them running a mock and getting out of control is reduced. But then I like how we get a twist parts always in where Hank's friend Kane, who was also friends of Elaine, pretty much shoots Elaine, and that was a great fucking twist right there in its own epic way. And then I like how it ends off with the main character waking up afterwards two months later from his coma to only find out that not only is his friend Elaine disappeared, but his friend Kane disappeared and he wants payback against Kane from assuming for Possibly either killing Elaine or shooting her. We actually don't know if Elaine's still alive, but I'm assuming Elaine's probably dead. And then it's revealed that most of the incarnates that um, that lived through the war are now going running amok and they're out of control. And I do like that because in the spin of the episode, not only do we find the backstory of why these incarnates exist in the setting, we also find out that they're causing conflict in the world, at least in the Patria country and they need to be taken care of. And I like that kind of stuff because not only is it all interesting, it sets itself up for some pretty epic action set pieces for future episodes. So that was also pretty nice too. And you get to see Hank with conviction because I'm assuming not only is he going to try to look for Kane because he was fucking screaming, hit the wall, and he yelled Kane, but he also has another motivation to take down the incarnates, his former military buddies that are going out of control and running amok. So that's also another cool element about this episode. And 
That's why I think from a story's perspective it was good because it ended off with Hank taking down someone that was an incarnate and it ended off in a cool action sequence. Now, aside from the story being engaging off the bat in the first episode, I also felt that it did a good job with the characters because at the very least it establishes Hank as a selfless individual and additionally, that's further emphasized when Elaine shoots Hank but then afterwards when he wakes up he smashes the wall as if he was kind of hoping that Elaine would have been able to proceed in her goals of getting rid of the other incarnates because you can see him, instead of being happy that he's alive, he's more of pissed that Kane shot Elaine. So I also like that too in its own way. And it's further established that he, um, he was obviously pissed when one of his former military, um, one of his former military people that he probably fought with was killing civilians and all that. So I also like that element too with Hank. So that was pretty cool. And then in addition to that, I also like how it establishes that he isn't a dense person when it comes to the feelings of women because at the very least at the start of the episode, he did realize that Elaine liked him too, but he wanted to wait till the war is over. It's just a shame for him that shit went fucking crazy near the end. So I also like that too because it kind of makes Hank into a character that I can feel sympathy for, aside from a character that has a super cool personality. So right off the bat, the main character is super likable. And then you have Kane where, at least from the get-go, it characterizes him as someone sweet, but then near the end we find the twist that he was going to work with Lane, but then he betrayed Elaine, and then he's laughing all evilly once he saves Hank, so it makes me wonder what's his angle. But, in a way, it's kind of a good thing, because it also makes Kane immensely interesting. And then the little bit we saw of Elaine was also relatively interesting, too, how, <clears throat> to the extent that not only did she attempt to try to kill the Incarnates, but she would also killed herself, so that everyone involved with the Incarnates would have passed away. And I also found that pretty interesting too to see that self-destructive personality. So that was also another cool thing about this episode. And I did like how from a story standpoint it even explained like the downsides of being an incarnate because eventually not only do you lose your sanity, you also lose your soul which is fucking crazy too. Which could also bring up a future plot point too where who knows, maybe eventually it could happen to Hank too where he loses fucking control. Hopefully it doesn't happen but it opens the door to that possibility. So this anime not only sets itself up for action set pieces, it fucking sets itself up for freaking feels later on too. So that's why I thought this episode hit it out of the park. It did quite a lot in making engaging stories, at least for this episode, making an engaging story so far, and engaging characters. Because it has a character in Hank where I can just root for. Then aside from that, the art and animation were fucking good. They actually hand drew a dragon. You know how rare that is? Most animes would settle for making dragons CG bullshit. And don't get me wrong, there are some animes that can make CG dragons look pretty fucking good. But let's just be real, most animes, they make CG dragons look ugly as fuck. So I gotta give props to Studio Mappa for their fine craftsmanship. The soundtrack was good, the voice performances were good, and I'd say this, for, for a first episode, this anime gave the total package, and that's why I'm going to rate this episode of Brand Spanky 9 out of 10 for it, for um, a first episode. And I recommend any of y'all who haven't seen it, check it out. It was lit. And yeah, these are pretty much my thoughts, y'all. Comment down your thoughts on how you felt about the episode, be sure to rate the video, subscribe. And I'll see you guys later if you subscribe for more because I'm definitely pumped up for more episodes of the series. Alright everyone, have a great and safe day. Bye bye.